Uh, but we're going to begin with personal development today, where we're talking about self-love and acceptance. With me here is Wanjiru Kaburu, who's a speaker, a writer, communication and branding strategist. And she has actually written a book titled The Power of Self love um karibu sana to the show and good to have you here thank you for having me tell me about this book that you've written what was the premise behind it okay this book is as it states the power of self-love but there is a phrase on it that is really the message here that behind every successful person is themselves mm. and the inspiration behind writing this book is looking at the expectations we have of our environments, of our parents, of our employers, of our nation at large. And sometimes we don't pause to look at what is our part in it, mm -hmm. what is our part in the success. Mm -hmm. Let me also point out that I'm a Christian because the first time I posted this cover on, the, on my pages, someone asked me, I think you're wrong. Behind every successful person is God. And I told them, you're right, I understand where you're coming from, but you need to realize that God gave us everything that we needed, the power within us, the same way he gave us the power to choose, the freedom to choose between right and wrong, evil and good. Mm -hmm. It's the same way he gave us the power to decide, to be deliberate about knowing who we really are and unleashing that. Mm -hmm. So that in a nutshell is what inspired me to write the book basing on various experiences that I've gone through in my own life. Mm -hmm. And after all that, I realized you have to really go back to look within and stop looking so much without and really tap into what. When you're keen enough, you will find it and tap into what you're really made of to become who really God created you to be. Right. But you're not able to do that until you first fall in love with the person that you find inside. Okay. Yeah. Could you maybe share one of your own experiences that really sort of switched that light bulb on uh, and made this very real for you to the point of writing a book about it and making this your, your lifestyle, your entire outlook of your life? There was a particular time when I was in Form 3. My high school life and a principal back then, I was in Chuka Girls High School back in Meru County, the Rakanidi County right now. And I had an occurrence where the principal just sat me down and just looked at me straight in the eyes without blinking and told me, your sister is such an angel, but you, you're such a devil. Wow. They actually said devil? Yes. That was my principal. That was the person who was supposed to guide, not condemn. Right. It doesn't matter what I had done. But those words really sunk deep in me and really disoriented me in a very big way. And I started looking now for affirmation of other things outside the devil thing from other people. Mm -hmm. My family, the people around me, and everything I kept feeling is that the affirmation of the devil mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And being a teenager, very fragile age, and you don't have this kind of support system, it starts getting into you and you start asking very pertinent and serious questions. And self-doubt, very deep self-doubt of your worth, of who you really are, are you worthy living? And it is in Form 3 that I first encouraged the thoughts of suicide. Wow. I became suicidal, I attempted suicide, and I think God spoke to me. I like saying that I think God said, no, this is not how your story is mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. And that voice or picking myself from that, I was never the same again. Okay. I had to become very deliberate right. in what I tell myself and what God says about me outside what everyone else Amazing. says about me. Amazing. Yeah. So in your book now, what are these nuggets then that, you know, drawing from your own experience uh, and researching, I guess, extensively about this topic, what are those first steps then towards self-love and self-care? Let me first say you can't love what you don't know. It is very, very critical and important that you get to know who you really are. 
And in this book, I've tried putting it in the simplest way possible, four parts in this. I've talked about knowing yourself, and this goes back to stepping out of all the noise that is around us these days. Social media, the people around us, televisions, programs, all those things, and finding some moments of solitude where you can actually reach within yourself and reach out to God mm. and finding that purpose. Because Joyce, like the way you have that phone with you, the person who made it put in a camera, I like using this example, mm -hmm. but it's upon you to find this camera so that you use it for the purpose it was intended. It is not the manufacturer's job. Mm -hmm. So God made us like that. He put it in us, but now we are left with the job of okay. finding it so we that you can use work. it. Okay. So for you to get to that, you first need to get to really know who you are, then love and embrace that which you find while putting on, I say put on your weaknesses as badges. Is that the second one? The second chapter we talk about now forgiving yourself. Mm. I've had experiences where I could not get myself out of bed because of something I did. It might not even be as big or as heinous as it can be. But that problem of failing to forgive yourself just makes you stuck in the past and certain experiences that do not really propel you to what you can right. be. So that's the second chapter of the book. Yeah. And then, then there's the chapter where now you're told to really commit. You need to learn to commit after finding who you are, loving who you are, then forgiving yourself when you are, then you learn to commit because there's nothing that comes without commitment. Right. So after knowing the passion, the purpose, the person you're really created to become, you need to do the work okay. of becoming it. And that is why we talk about committing who you are so that you're able now to bless the world right. with these gifts that you are. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. How can people get in touch with you or at least get a copy of your book? I am available on social media platforms by the name Wanjiro Kaburu. That's my name across LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and IG. Okay. And my phone number is 0701. That's actually is your copy. I signed it for you. Oh, so wow. That's, Thank you. I hope you enjoy reading it. Wow. So my number is on the book, but it's 0701-735-059. Okay. So we can SMS, WhatsApp. At the moment, I'm trying to get the book to the bookstore. So when you hook up with me on either of the platforms, you're able to understand or learn when the book is already available in right. any bookstore. How much is it? The book goes at 1,000 shillings. 1,000 shillings. Yes. All right. Well, the power of self-love behind every successful person is themselves, is the book here by Wanjiru Kaburu. Going only for 1,000, Bob, you can reach out to her on social media. Thank you very much for coming on to the show and just reminding us how, yes, God is the one, number one, that is behind everything that we do. But even the word says that faith without works is dead. And so at some point, you know, we need to pull up our socks and do our part as we trust him to do his. So thank you very much for that reminder this morning, Wanjiro. All right, guys, we need to take a short break now as we get ready for our next segment. Uh, we still have on the way a focus on tech and innovation and also the scale of jewelry making. All this still right here on Full Circle with Joyce. Stay tuned. <laughs> 